Hi there, uh, my name is Caesar, and in this video I would like to talk a little bit about Python and memory management, what happened with the memory, uh, mutable types, side effects, and all that stuff. So, um, why I think this is important? Uh, it's important because Python does a really cool job uh, hiding all the memory management for us. But in order to do that, it has to take some choices, right? And and yeah, and that choices can 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 abide us uh, back depending on what are we doing. So they have some weird effects on our code, and it's important for us to know what's going on. So in order to show you the, what I'm talking about, oops. Uh, we can do yeah we can do like an example so we'll create a, a Python script and in this case we're going to use a, a transform so a transform for our purposes will be a thing aggregating the translation rotation scale of a point in the space or something uh, this will be very simplified uh, will not be touching matrices or anything like that. It's just to show you the Python stuff. So let's start by creating a class called transform uh, with capital T, of course. Cool, and this have a init, right? And now we, let's say we have a translate. And to make it simple, let's say it's a it's a list. So we also have a, a rotate, right? And we also want a scale. And the scale uh, probably we want uh, this as a default, right? One, which is one hundred percent of scale. So that's cool. Uh, so now let's uh, use this. So let's create an instance of that. And let's say we want to print um, x for one, let's say like that. And we're going to print x for one translate. And this will be x for one dot translate. And of course, I did something wrong. Oh, sure. Cool. If I run this, we have this uh, login there, which say it's zero, right? The default translate, which is good. So let's keep going. Let's say we want to x for one dot translate a zero and x. We want to assign a random number. times 100 so to have something and let's say let's import a random so this makes sense uh, cool so if i run this we have a random number on the x coordinate and if i run it again we have a different number so that's what we want cool so let's keep going oops So let me create a new transform. And this time I want to match the translation of the previous one. So x so to the trans translate is equal to x for what translate. Right? So they're in the same position. And then I want to x for two the translate. Take the x and add five units. Yeah, why not? And then let's print the same stuff. So this is x for two now. And that's x for two. So if I print this, uh, we have a five units between both transforms. So that's cool, right? That's exactly what we want. But is it really working? looks like but what happened 
if I move the sprint to the bottom and I run this again, whoa, something happened. Right? For some reason, X41 now and X42 translate are have the same values. But if we look at the code, it doesn't make much sense. Right? We're not modifying X41 here. We're modifying X42. So what's going on? So in order to understand this, uh, we need to take a step back and think in terms of the memory. So under the hood, every variable goes to has to be a store in the memory. Uh, there's a lot of caveats and uh, details going on here, but let's just call it memory. Imagine it's a big block of memory and each thing has an address, just like in a city, your house has an address, right? So th there are different kinds of uh, objects uh, and those are defined by its class, its type. So we have multiple types, like let's say a list, and what this means is that we can change a list in place. Uh, so we are not creating a new list. We are just changing its values in place. We are appending an item or removing items. And this is done by modifying the stuff in the, in the, in the address, right? We are not putting a new object there uh, in the memory address. And there are, there are also immutable objects, like a tuple, like a frozen set, like a integer, float, string. And those objects cannot be modified after they're being created. Uh, so we can think about it as a read-only access to the memory address. We, we cannot modify that piece of memory. Uh, so why is this important? Uh, well, it is important because uh, when we are saying here XO2, which is a mutable type, or the custom classes are mutable, dot translate, which is a list, which is also mutable, it's equals to X41 dot translate. What's happening? It's that Python is doing exactly that. So now both translates are pointing to the same memory address. It's the same list. So in the next line, when we modify translate on X42 and we add five units to the first item, uh, we are doing the same to X41 because it's the same list. So I can sh show you this. So let me. So let's. Uh, let me. Yeah. yeah. Let's. Let me add a few prints here. So let's print the memory address of x one dot translate. So it's the exited move of the ID of x one dot translate so let's print that and let's do the same with x42 so that's the v4 and let's do that the same on the after so if this is correct and i run this you can see how uh, beginning the first run the two first uh, values which are the memory address of those uh, lists are different so x41 and x42 they're pointing to different lists and after the assignment they're pointing to the same list which is the list on x41 right it ends on 48 and if we look at the code that's exactly what we are telling python to do but of course if we don't think in terms of memory it's very hard for us to understand what's going on. So let me undo that. So how to fix this? Uh, there are many ways. Uh, a quick fix, uh, we can pass a copy, oops, a copy of that list. So if I run this now, you can see that, that the memory address change uh, after and before but it's always different between both elements so at least you 
are not changing x for one uh, after the fact and let me uh, uncomment that and that and you can see how it works now they are not linked together so that's one way to do it but uh, unfortunately if you do that uh, you're kind of passing the problem to the user of your class uh, so you, you need to make the user of that class uh, to be aware that this is a list that's mutable so it has to co copy uh, instead of just pass by reference and maybe people will forget about it especially if you're sharing this code uh, so that's kind of a not a good uh, not the best of the strategies to deal with this so another way to do it is hiding that copy on the class itself and that's why uh, you can see a lot of languages using getter and setters in Python we can use properties for the same purpose but uh, as soon as you start like dealing with uh, reliable code you start like doing all these copies and gather and setters and all the well my opinion at least all the beauty of Python a very short code and uh, it kind of goes away and um, yeah that's the way it goes so let, let's do the property so you can see how it works so let's add a property here and let's call it translate cool so we want to delete that, that, and that. And now in the setter, I've set, I want to pass a copy, right? That's one way. So now if I select this, copy, paste, and paste. So now this, we do the same with uh, rotate. So that's one way to go. And this is scale and this is scale and now all this become underscore so if I run this now you can see how the memory addresses are different and, and, and we have the, the results that we want um, so yeah so that's one way to go about it. Uh, notice that now we have to deal with all this code, uh, extra code, and this is a very simple class, right? But you start seeing this stuff all over the place for just for something as simple as uh, having access to, a, a, you know, an iterable member of uh, our class. So it's kind of a, a bummer but it is what it is. It would be super nice if the language provide a, a way to do this, like a keyword or something, but as far as I know, there's no way to do it in Python uh, as today. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, to finalize, I guess, the getaway of this is, it's very important to be aware of the types you are dealing with. Uh, they are mutable, immutable, um, and all this abstraction of the memory is nice, but you kind of have to be aware of it or in order to debug these kind of problems uh, that will happen. I mean, it happens everywhere. Uh, as soon as you kind of are aware of this, uh, you will start seeing it all over the place. Uh, so yeah, that's the price of dealing with Python on so such a high level abstraction, right? Uh, there are choices, choices, there are trade-offs, and that's what we got. <laughs> so that's it. I hope you like it, and see you around. Bye-bye.